Welcome back guys to Panama Reeves. Today we're gonna talk about one of my favorite coral. The Sun Coral, also known as the Tubastria. Sun corals or Tubastria are quite different from most other LPS corals. They do not possess a xanthelli, therefore they cannot do photosynthesis, and so they get absolutely no energy from the light. In the wild, Tubastria corals live in caves, ravines, or on the underside of cliff faces. All these places have two things in common. One, they get little or no direct sunlight. And two, they are places where food particles tend to move to. This is especially true of undersea cliffs, where hot water currents move up, bringing huge amounts of microfauna to the surface. If we take what we learn from this and apply it to our reef tanks, we can conclude that the sun corals like medium to high flow and a somewhat frequent feeding schedule. Now to my personal experience with this coral. After some dialogue with the owner of one of my LFS, which is someone that I feel that I can trust, I decided to buy this coral without having done more than a quick search on my smartphone. It was quite cheap after all, only $15, and I did like the colors, even though back then I was only looking at it completely closed. It was quite a surprise then, when just an hour after light out, I came and saw something like this. I knew what to do then, it was feeding time, and boy this coral likes to eat. It eats so fast in fact. And sometimes when you leave it for a moment, when you come back, it's already wide open again, ready for another go. You might have noticed that I'm feeding it pellets. Most articles I have read prescribe frozen food, like mices. However, I believe that if you can make something simpler, do it. And fish eat pellets all the time, so I figured there wouldn't be a problem. After more than a month feeding almost exclusively pellets, I can say this coral thrives on them. Maybe it's hard to notice in this video, since I have been jumping from shots I took back when I bought it to some I have recorded just yesterday. But take a look, this was almost 4 weeks ago. And this was last night. As you can see this coral is still healthy. And more than that, it's growing. Now, what did I learn in this time? 1. Broadcast feeding is the worst way to feed a sun coral. Broadcast feeding means just taking a whole bunch of food and dumping it in the tank. Obviously, this dumps way too much nutrients in the water, and algae blooms are almost a certainty. Two. Target feeding is only the second best option. Target feeding gets pretty much every polyp fed, but it takes a long time, and some food always gets into the water column. 3. Not every polyp has to be fed. While all polyps have a separate digestive system, coral tissue can transport some of the nutrients between the polyps, so it's false that some polyps will starve if you don't feed them. 4. Put it somewhere with moderate flow and where detritus likes to pass through. In my tank I have it on the bottom glass and in the front. During nighttime, the gyres move a lot of water and particulate through that corridor. 5. Feeding once a day is enough. This might be a bit controversial, but if you combine it with the last tip you can see how this coral gets some continuous inflow of nutrients. So now that we're done with that, how do I actually feed my sun coral? I use two methods, depending on how much work I feel like doing in a single day. The days I'm feeling a bit lazy, I use a sort of target feeding, where I turn off all my pumps and simply drop the pellets on top of the sun coral. The days I feel like giving it a big meal, however, I actually carefully 
take out the coral. I put it in a container I only use for this, and once inside the container I go nuts, pouring loads of food, be it pellets or frozen. I circulate the water from time to time with a syringe, so that the food on the bottom has another chance of being devoured. After 15 minutes of this, I let the polyps digest, and after an hour, I put it back into the tank. This method of feeding can feel a bit rough on the coral, since you are in fact touching it and taking it out of the water. However, I feel confident using this method, for two reasons. One, the polyps usually come back out soon after they touch the water, and they are not in the air for more than a couple seconds anyway. And two, I have seen no adverse signs like tissue damage, polyp retraction, or stunting in growth. After testing this method for almost a month, I can fully endorse it, with the caveat of having a clean container and no swings in temperature while outside the tank. So in conclusion, I have found the sun coral to be one of the most fun coral to keep. I love having to interact with the tank every day, and I can say that this is a hardy coral, who as long as you feed it consistently is capable of bouncing back from a lot. I can recommend it for anyone who has the time and wants something that keeps their hands wet every day. I hope you guys like this video, and I will gladly answer all your questions in the comments. Thanks for watching! I will see you guys next time. Bye.